I'm Daniel Flashy. I'm a freelance architect and I teach and uh, I, I work for other architects and I work for myself and private clients and that kind of thing. What route did you take in becoming an architect? Very traditional. I did part one at Leeds and did my year out with a small award-winning practice in Manchester. Then I did my part two at Manchester and then I moved to London and after a couple of years experience did my part three. Uh, also with a small award-winning practice in London and, uh, and that was it. And then I was an architect and then I became freelance. What made you decide to become a freelance architect? I've always been heading towards having my own practice or being in partnership with someone. Um, and becoming freelance is a transitional uh, state where I can still gain experiences from, experience from larger or more experienced practices uh, and so I'm afforded to be able to work on a variety of interesting jobs that I wouldn't be able to take on under my own steam just yet as, as I'm still quite inexperienced. I've also uh, always had a distaste for the way that uh, young members of architectural practices are treated and, uh, and it, I don't think I don't think the problem is just limited to the practices I've had experience from. I think it's to do with the industry in general that everyone is out for themselves and everyone does work for free and the people at the bottom of the pile who have seven years qualified, uh, so have done a seven year qualification, they don't get enough respect, autonomy, money um, and so I, I was quick to, to leave that position as soon as I could. Did you have any reservations about going freelance? I did in that I didn't know how it would work. I always termed it as an experiment but there's safety nets. I'm pretty confident I could get a job fairly quickly if it all went wrong. Um, so yes but not massive reservations. How do you typically go about resourcing commissions, speculative approaches, marketing, contracts? It's about personal contacts in my experience. Uh, I've kept in touch with everyone I've ever done work for and I keep in touch with anyone that I've uh, been a co-worker of, people I went to uni with, people I went to school with. Uh, it's all about keeping, keeping in touch with people, reminding people you exist. Uh, when I first went freelance, it was very easy. I knew a few sole practitioners. It was very easy to just have a coffee with them, tell them my plans. And within the month, I was, uh, I was booked up for two, three months after, after quitting my job. Um, and it's just an ongoing relationship with these people um, uh, and telling them what you do, telling them how you can help them and that's it. How do you compare being in charge of yourself as opposed to working for somebody else? There's a lot more responsibility. Uh, I've got to deal with things that I never had to deal with before, like putting in prices uh, or fee bids and uh, the buck sort of stops with me. I've got no one to check against. I've got no one uh, of authority to say is what I'm doing the right thing to do. And again, as long as you've got good, uh, uh, good relationships with people who are higher up than you or further, uh, further along than you or even peers who are in a similar position, you can just call them up and ask them for advice. But at the end of the day, the responsibility is mine, and that's the biggest, 
the biggest change. I've got to make sure that if I'm instructing something on site, it's the right thing to do. You're also a lecturer at the Manchester School of Architecture. Uh, what are your views between the relationships of being an architect and tutoring? I think it's good to bring professional experience into architectural education. I think I can do that because I'm I still have one foot in the educational world. I, you know, I'm not so far along in my career that I've forgotten what it's like to be a student. Uh, I can help students on a more practical level that uh, long-term academics can't. Uh, I can talk about the state of the industry and I, I, I can perform a bridge or, or act as a bridge between the industry and uh, students. Um, to remind them that what they're doing will have an effect in the real world. But, as I said, I was a student not long ago, so I, I hope that I don't limit them with their professional constraints as well. You run a theoretical unit. Do you think theory has relevance to the professional work that you do? I think so mainly because my architectural unit deals with, always deals with an existing context and it always deals with a connection between old and new. And architecture in cities like Manchester and London always, nearly always has an existing context or an existing structure. I've worked on far fewer complete new builds than I have on extensions and refits and refurbs and although maybe I've not been in a position of authority on a project uh, where, it, where I could fully explore the things that I explore in my unit, they certainly relate to one another. Your work ranges from architecture, illustrations, paintings, diagrams. Uh, what takes priority in your day-to-day -day life and how do they affect each other? Generally it's paid work that takes priority. Uh, there are hobbies like the illustration that just sit on the back burner for, for months because I'm busy. And it's a, it's a good thing to be busy, but if I, if I maybe didn't have as much paid work, I would be able to lay the foundations for something that will will pay out later on, but it's paid work. What challenges are facing our profession now and what challenges will we face in the future? Our profession, as I said, it's it's a demoralizing profession for a young architect to enter and I would hope that uh, that, that will change because the industry doesn't permit uh, the old style as much anymore. The way I work is I'm a sole practitioner. I do my own architectural projects, but I also collaborate with other people. I, would, I think that there is a future for, uh, for me in working in the same, pra uh, same location as other sole practitioners, teaming up for bigger projects dispersing for smaller projects, being able to, to get that office, mental, uh, office dynamic of, uh, of internal reviews and advice and sharing overheads, but still being able to retain creative autho autonomy. And I think, I think that is the architecture practice of the future. It's much more flexible. What advice would you give to students and newly graduate architects? Nepotism will help. 